I enjoyed that so much. It's so polished, the two of you playing together. You know, this is a very sort of uncompromising thing to do, right, to play four hands. But for those of you who don't know four hands, you know, I think um, at one point it was considered sophisticated entertainment to have somebody over to tea in the afternoon and to play duets together and hopefully, you know, there would be more. But um, very, very, very good. I enjoyed it so much. So I have all kinds of things to talk to you about. Um, but I would say, before we even start, a couple of sort of housekeeping things. When you play, always check that this is down, you know, because it does, you know, it blocks the, it blocks the sound. That would be, a, just, uh, I, I remember, I know I've done it too, but it's very important to do that. The other thing, the way you sit, I'm thinking, you know, with this, this kind of thing, there's always a bit of angling towards the middle, right, for both people. I think if you, if you angled the bench, stand up for a second. I think if they're this way, like so, it would actually be better because it would just try that just and sort of angle it this way yeah so that that's right so that you you've got better you know so that you don't have to turn your leg out to get the pedal i think just so that because it's a it's a sort of a strange thing to start with right okay so now about this piece do you enjoy playing it yes i think it's wonderful now do you know do you know how it started do you know what it was originally 
Oh, okay. Well, it, it started its life as a song for, for voice and piano accompaniment, you know, based on this poem about the, the devil playing his violin in a graveyard um, every Halloween, and then at a, at a certain point, all the skeletons dance, and then when the sun rises, the rooster crows, and everybody goes back in until, until next year. But, um, and so then it became an orchestra piece, right, which I'm sure you've heard, right? Okay. Um, and then many, many people have sort of had their way with it. What, what you're basically playing here is something that's an arrangement, right? It's a transcription of, of, of maybe of the orchestra piece, definitely of the orchestra piece. And this is a good, this is a good one. I like it. I think what the two of you can do better, and, I, and, this, is, and this will be fun to work on, is you, you need to sound more like an orchestra than like a piano when you play it. Because I think the way you play it sounds very nice, but um, it may be, maybe this, you know, the character of the piece, when it was first played in, in, uh, in public, people were sort of disturbed by it. They were upset by the use of the Dies Irae, they were upset by the use of all the, the xylophone in the orchestra signifying the rattling of the skeleton stuff. It, it was kind of upsetting. But so when you play it, I think it needs to have more color and more sweep. And a lot of, and some of that depends on you because I think the pedal is a very effective tool in this piece. So when you start, um, do you remember what, who, what instrument in the orchestra plays the first thing? This is very important. Oh, okay. This is important. In the beginning, you hear this, this is supposed to be the clock striking midnight and the harp plays it. Right? And so, so you have to, so the, the sound itself cannot be sort of, it needs to have a certain kind of ring to it. So, do you see that? Do you want to try that? Curve your finger and just pull it out very quickly and keep the pedal down. That's better. That's better. You see, you're not going to sound, you're not going to sound like a piano at all anymore. You have to have, the, you have to have, think of colors in a different dimension. Just do that again, please. Can, can, you can play from memory f for a while, right? So, so, and also, so a little, just a little bit stronger that the sound actually could travel, that you can hear like the strike of the chime. Put the pedal down before you start, yeah. Try, try the, try second finger, it's better. That's it. Okay, so that's, I mean, all, all of that is fun. Actually, it's a little quick for me. It needs to, there needs to be a full and so, et cetera. But, but so, you know, so that's that, that kind of sound. Then what instrument are you playing when you come in? You're not sure. Okay, this is, okay so this is, this is something else. I, I'm not, I, I'm not gonna be the mean teacher, but I think this is very important. Okay, so, a violin, right? Remember the devil is the one who plays the violin, and his violin is not a usual violin. He's tuned to that, but the violin, his, his violin is tuned this way, which, which, uh, which in technical terms they call a scordatura, when the string is tuned a, a half step lower. And this interval in music is called the diabolus in musica, the devil, the devil's interval. So when you play that, it, it has to sound um, sort of evil and grim and sort of gnarly and coarse, not pretty. So you've got So it's not it's not gonna be a pretty sound. It's it's gonna be something that has that has bite to it. I mean this is the, the I think the piece is sort of tongue in cheek, but it is, it depicts something kind of grim. Can you go from there? So I wouldn't hold it. You see, this is the thing. You, we, that makes the sound too dull. Remember, you're going to play orchestra now, not piano. So you've got... And you could use... Do you pedal for him there? Hmm. Okay. You, give him a little bit more. Okay. Try that. Yes. That's pretty good. Um, it could overlap a little bit. Then less there, I think. And can you do that again and then you come in? You know, you know what to do there, right? So, 
There's not, there's not time to dwell on too much details, but what you can do better here, I like it fine. He has all these, these marks in here. Remember, in a space like this that is quite live, you always have to overdo things like slurs and um, leave a little bit more time for sudden dynamic changes and things like that. So in some... And, and just... In terms of shaping, it always goes down for that. So that it has a long line in the middle of all of that too. Does that make sense? And for the... Th this is fine. One of the tricky things about playing piano duets is that there's, uh, there's uh, sort of one hand on the extreme and two in the middle, right? It's a little bit like a string quartet. So the, the voices in the middle always have to balance very carefully. And, and some of the, the chordal stuff, I hear a little bit too much middle and not enough bass for one thing. So we'll we'll figure that out. But can you can you pick it up here where, where the you know where the melody begins? Go ahead. So I could use more bass from you there, for example. Mm -hmm. And when you get here in the orchestra, the sound, the texture becomes more full and lush. And the violin is playing on his G string, so he has a full throaty kind of sound. So with that, I would say longer pedals, even though it doesn't say so in the score. So that you're... So the sound is the sound is quite lively. Um, can you can you pick it up from the the pretty thing? Use full bars of pedal there, please. Pull the pickup. Would you, you know, I can sort of look over your shoulders too, if it would be helpful. Okay, let's try that again with, with long pedals on all of these, please. Places like this too, with remember the, the pedal is, is something that you can use not only to, to sustain, but also to, to, to um, give sudden color to the sound, and, to, and, and in, in this case to help accent it. Um, let's see, where is that? Uh, let's start. Oh yeah, from, from there. It's okay. One, two, three. Also, there's a lot of left hand from you, so it gives him more, more support from the bottom. Try that together. Do you like sitting a little better like this? I think the angle is, this is, you know, you, it's close quarters. One more time, please.
giving more of that bass. It, he wants it, it's some kind of dance. It's not some kind, it is really a dance. And, and it's, it's this kind of sort of crazy thing that's happening. It's completely, you know, it's a, it's a fantasy, but it's wonderful. But that gives it, um, you know, it's, if you, you, the way you play it is nice, but it needs, it needs that kind of character. And, um, and especially if you understand uh, what instruments are playing what? You can think of it you sort of on a, on a different dimension rather than just a, a piano piece because you do that extremely well. Um, let's go from this little thing here. This was very nice. Good. Okay, so this is an acoustical thing that we'll work on quickly. In a place like this, if you anticipate the accent, it sounds like you're playing early. And it's in a, in a drier space that would work fine. But dum ba da dum bum ba da dum. But so you've got. Sorry, I'm just doing it. Mm -hmm. But but uh, uh, try that again, and it can be a little stronger accent back right off of it. That's better. Right. Yeah, go ahead and join, please. Orchestra score, if, I'm, if my memory serves me correctly, there's an accelerando here. So that when you actually get here, it's faster. Dum, bum, 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 bum. So you got to The whole thing turns, it, the whole piece kind of works up to a frenzy. So, the, it, so in, a, in a big picture, that's all, the, the big plan is to sort of, it gets wild, and then just when everybody's, you know, sort of reached their drift or whatever, the rooster crows, and that's the end of the party. But but it's not there. Yet. But but I would. Do you want to work this up? This could be kind of fun. Um, maybe from maybe from here. Do you have the? Do you know where this is? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I'll I'll egg you on. Okay. <laughs> yes. Okay. Good. Yeah. And that's that that is not phrased right. No, no fancy phrasing, it's just all light and short and very rhythmic. Just from there with a, with a new tempo. that pulls back. So here, of, of course, the violin is back, right? But this is a tricky place because there's so much in the middle here with you and him, so you need to play a lot with your bass here. So that one can also hear that. That's a really beautiful progression in the harmony there. So can we go right from there for a second, please? Just And be very clear on this. The harp plays that in the orchestra. Thank you. 
it's it's not quite creepy enough, but 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 you pl but you're playing it very well. Let's skip ahead because we we're so quickly running out of time. Um, but all of that has a lot better spirit. The, the tempo, you know, when it once it gets going, keep it. You you don't want it to sort of settle down and be comfortable. Um, this is a beautiful place here. You can sing the. That can definitely sing out more, okay? But we, we must do the end. That's very important. Um, oh, yes. So, so just uh, in terms of sort of dynamics here, you don't want to go, get softer and softer here. That's just not right. It has to go louder and faster, and faster and faster. Um, c c crazy fast here. Um, would you like to try that, actually? Um, Maybe from here. Can you pick it up here in the middle? That's, you know, so he'd go, scoot over for a second. Yeah, no, that's, that's great. Do you see what it is? That's what it is. Remember, this is program music. It's telling a story. This is, this is not a, a, a pretty piano character piece. This is something that tells sort of a kind of, it's supposed to frighten people, I think. So when you get, and so as it gets louder and louder, more and more pedals, so we... Here we get here. Can I hear the rooster, please? That's, that is too pretty. This, 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 is, this is not, this is, you know, that kind of thing. Do you happen to know what instrument plays that in the orchestra? No. You will be punished. Um, it's an oboe. And an oboe in that register, they could make, well, I mean, an oboe is sometimes, you know, considered sort of more like a duck, but this, this time it's a chicken. But it's sort of, and then here, Oh, yeah, the strings, everybody goes, Brrr. you know, it's this kind of, they're creating this drama, and then it's just, you know, shucks, the party's over, right? And, and you know, and it's done. But, but it's this kind of thing, it has to be super evocative. We have one minute, let's play the end again. Show us your best rooster. Um, Let's make some noise here. How about this thing? Do you know where that is? Good. How can we? Is this your left hand? Try one, two, a crossover. Oh, do you, oh, do you play that right. with your right hand? Oh, well, then you should have a better sound. Try that again. Let's articulate. That's a, yeah, it's a more finger articulation. Okay, and, and at this point, I think, do you use a soft pedal? Uh, yes. I would, yeah, I would. Yeah, and then boom. So more. At the end, I think, yeah, something like that. That's very exciting. Do you see what you have to do? Mm -hmm. Number one, listen to the listen to the 
recording of the orchestra, study the score. I'm sure you can find it. It's easily available on, on, the, on the web. It'll just be a whole lot more fun to play because it'll lift it to a higher level. But it's great to hear you and, and, and you play beautifully together. And also, thank you for playing from memory. It's very impressive. Thank you. Thank you.
That's really beautiful. Um, I love this piece, and it's something that, that is so rarely played. I'm not sure I've actually ever heard it played in public before. I play it sort of for, my, for myself, but have you enjoyed it? What's your favorite part about it? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I, I like all of it. Mm -hmm. But the um, but in terms of uh, in terms of playing it, what do you in, do you enjoy the way it feels under the fingers? Do you enjoy the colors? What do you? Because you because it's so you know you played in such a polished and enjoyable way that I was just curious. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. It was just for my own interest. Let's uh, let's start from the beginning. I like I like it very much. I think what we can do. Is, you know, especially since he says in the beginning, he talks of tempo rubato here again, right? So I think what we can do is um, experiment with some of it moving along a little bit more. I think it, I think it can be a little bit more, um, it sort of, it leans a little bit more, more romantic for me. And yours is a little cool. I would, I would bring a little bit more, more warmth and motion into it. Can we start from the beginning, please? And, and you're, I would use a little bit more soft pedal here and there also for color. For example, in the beginning, I would. Use a soft pedal. For the whole beginning? Well, let's see. In the beginning, you kind of create a color and atmosphere, right? So you can have it here. If you want to orchestrate that in your head, for example, that could be a harp or something, right? So you could have this. And maybe a French horn. And maybe it'll come off for that. No 
those two can also be played at slightly different speeds, if you like. Just, you're, you're still setting up the introduction to the whole piece, right? Try that. It can be very imaginative and spontaneous, too. From the beginning, please. Excellent. I really like that very, very much. That had more stuff in it than when you played it for me just now. You know, always think of things when things have flats and when things have sharps. I always find that sharps maybe have a slightly brighter color, right? So when you have this sort of a more mellow... It's as if the sound opens up slightly for me in that color. I like that very much. Let's go on because I want to tinker a little bit with this. It says tempo here. I think it can have a little bit more motion. Would you like to start right where you left off? If you don't mind me saying so, I think it's just a little bit square. I think it can be, you know, uh, I, it can it can ebb and flow. I'm sure you do you know like it's it's the same, and I don't often think of that. That, that in Debussy, I normally think of him as being a little bit more, um, a little bit cooler and a little bit more constrained. But I think this has, this has rather romantic tendencies, and I think he can go back and forth, especially since he takes the trouble to write tempo rubato in the beginning. So I take that as a big clue that he wants it more freer than, say, some of the other things. Let's go right there, and, and feel free to move and come, that is, has an ebb and flow to it. So in a place like this, that has to carry a lot of the, the melody, right? So be careful with the balance in a place like this. That all of that balance is nicely. And then eventually... Opens up. From here, please. This needs to sing a little bit more and let that blend with it. So listen to, make sure that that sound blooms completely before you play that. Just the right hand alone, please. Hello. Oh, I see. This, a slightly quick, can you make the key go down a little faster on that? Yes, that's right, because, so that it carries better, and then slower on that, see? That's it. Great. That balances it. And then there's a, this is sort of in two parts. So that sort of breaks off into four different parts, really. Try that with both hands, please.
I think that's beautiful. Very, very nice. So, um, so in this kind of thing, you're so used to playing it, but, but remember this, you're probably introducing this for the first time to most everybody here today. So what, what you should do in, a, in, in instances like that is always slightly em emphasize more the, the things that you would like them to hear. For example, here... That's such a pretty color, and they need... Do you hear it so that you're... Whenever there's any kind of unusual accidental in, uh, in the key, is an indication that he, he's either taking you to a different place, or he's trying to... And, it, and, and in this kind of music, it's all about colors and shades of colors, right? And that's, and uh, he, he understood the piano so well, just like Chopin did. So you could really, you know, do something wonderful with your pedal or with the timing or something. Could you pick it up there, please? natural tendency is for that to crescendo, isn't it? Because it goes up. But he has a slur over it, which to me tells me that he wants it to go the opposite. So that everything sort of... That the, the, the notes following the bass note is just the color. So you're... So that it's easy. And what that does is it's it's to the point where it kind of interferes a little bit with the nice thing that your right hand's doing. Would you like to try that please? Good. Bass. more and more harmonies are starting to fill out the chords right and that's that's very nice to feature here also but all of this sounds very very nice let's um, move ahead a little bit may I please hear this critical there. I think the small notes in the left hand are too loud. Again, it's a kind of... Just like a rustle un underneath it all. It's easy, they're active and we'll hear them because it's the only thing that's really moving. So keep that quiet, play from the left hand, the bass notes. That's right. Okay, yeah, that sounds fine. In, in this kind of music, um, you have to sometimes make a decision whether you really want to hear every note articulated or whether you want uh, something that is just an effect. I think in this case it's just a color. So I don't think you have to worry that they're all... I think it's a... It's not, it's not that important. It's just a color. Both hands, please.
middle is a little bit too noisy for me. Do you see? Especially after a long note. that it sounds like a little chime or a bell or something. Okay? Very, very nice. Yeah. All of this is nice. I would love to hear a little bit of the E major section here, please. This you played beautifully. I want to hear it again. such a nice level. I want you to color more. Mm. And then... That's pretty, right? D do something different between those two things. They sound the same to me. You can, you can go louder, softer, anything, but don't play them the same. Do that again, please. Excellent. Let's talk a little bit about all these rolled chords at the end. Um, can you please, maybe, maybe just right there, let's just work on those for a second, please. Okay, that's nice. Okay, so, um, of course, I think the, 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 the function of these things are expressive, it's, it's to be expressive, right? And so he has a he has a little he has a the roll is broken in the middle. You see, it's not a long a long roll that goes way through, which means that you have to play them together. If there's a long squiggle, it's this way. But if there are two squiggles, they together. So, it, which changes the sound. Instead of sort of one harp, it's two playing at the same time. Do you want to try that? It's they're all like that. I think that's that's not you're not doing it quite correctly. Try that. Better. Exactly, that's right. And of course, they can, they can be at different speeds and everything. So you do. Uh... And so on. Does that make sense? I think that's, I think that's just the, the correct way to do it. Um, and having said that, I would probably b break the rule at the end, <laughs> since that, since that thing. How do you voice that, by the way? I'd love to hear the end again before we stop. Can we go from this here? It's so beautiful. Yeah. 
that was that was very good. This wasn't so clear when you played it the first time because you want to you want to bring that out, right? So I think if you want to make that clearer, play maybe a little bit a little bit more presence in the sound on those, and then these could be late, like just like Brutal Avenue. sort of later and later if you like. So that you see that so you, you break it up into another layer. Do that again, just these last few, that's very pretty. Resolution. And then maybe more on this one. And then softer and slower. really beautiful. Thank you. I enjoyed that so much.
I think with this piece, <laughs> this piece is sort of one of the, the greatest things in Western civilization. <laughs> I love this piece so much. <laughs> what did you say? I said I love this piece so much. I, think I am is... glad you do because I, it, is, it, is, it is really amazing. Um, there's so many there's so many fun things to work on in it. Uh, what I what I appreciate about these kinds of things and and, and sort of Beethoven in particular is you know he's he's always so really specific about what he wants in the music, right? But with a lot of earlier composers we have to guess and you know we cannot exactly you know send them a text message or an email. But with him you know you have you have a reasonable idea of what he wants and I always I try to sort of obey it as much as I possibly can. For me what you can do with it. Um, uh, also, I, I can understand a lot of what you want to do by your body language. I think that's, you know, in a performance that, that sort of says a lot about, to, about what one does, right? Um, I think a lot of this, the things you should do with this is more, is more inner than outer. Mm -hmm. Which means that, uh, that, that, that I don't think it, it, ha it should have quite the, um, the, the, the intensity that you bring to it. I, I think your, your intentions are right, but I think it's not, it's not this kind of thing. A lot of it sort of burns from the inside. Um, especially, you know, as you go through the sonata r later on, right? Of course, later on, this is, I mean, the thing of a person, I think, just about, just about sort of dying, right? And then, and then reviving again. So I think all of that sort of speaks of the, the whole sort of the, con the concept of the whole thing, right? Mm -hmm. um, I would also, and, and, and we'll work on this, how to sort of do more things with your fingers and less with a pedal, mm -hmm. okay? Um, and, and there are endless sort of details and things we can fuss with. I would love to hear the opening again, now that you're, now that you're sort of more used to the, your surroundings. Mm -hmm. um, it's sort of, of course, it's not sort of, it's not really piano music, right? It's sort of somewhere between a, a string quartet and a choir. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you think? Yeah. yeah. So let's work on that a little bit. Um, I, I'd love to. I'd love to hear you play that up close again, please. I wouldn't use a soft pedal. Put the pedal down before you start. Yeah. That's very hard to control. That. Yeah. Um, I would. Do, I would. Do, what fingering do you use in the right hand? Five three. I, you know, I would. I would try five two even. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit more reliable. Um, and it just it flows the, the, the sound sort of flows through you there's no activity or rigidity here at all just be upright just breathe through so look and I also listen to the appoggiatura saying it's easy but I've pondered that a lot in my life but 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 you see about the sound the sound should tell the story not you you're you're just the messenger mm -hmm. okay try that again I yeah I may touch you forgive me okay. up 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 yes there we go if you if you this way when you start you won't have anywhere to go here so that this can really see so, excuse me. Can I see that? Okay, play for me. Yeah, you see, this shouldn't be. It should be release. Yes. Yes. There we go. And hold it while you do it. Just, just you know, everything flows through you, mm -hmm. and then you release. Okay, but so. isn't that one connected to this one? Like same motion? Well, no. You need to. No, you need to. If, if this is. You have nowhere to go once you stop mm -hmm. it. You see, it has to be and connect. Mm -hmm. yes. That's right. That's okay. right. And minimal motion, otherwise there'll be a lot of accents that you don't want. Yeah. Let's do both hands. I need to hear that subito piano there. Mm -hmm. you, see, you know where it is, right? 
Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's imperative to hear it. And or also give, give time because this is a very live space. We can spend a lot of time on that, but I'll just sort of throw a few things at you. Mm. One of the difficult things about, especially these late sonatas, is you have to, um, a, a lot of them, is, it's a sort of a combination between things that are very organized and things that are free. And at this moment, there's a, there's a, there's a period where it sort of breaks into freedom, right? Mm -hmm. Here, when it sort of stops, and then he often, I think, que he questions a lot of things in the sonata. You sort of, he, he, and then he sometimes takes you where you don't expect. This is a totally sort of expected thing. But it's, it's very difficult to decide where to wait and where not to wait. Mm -hmm. So because you have, you have the subito and the fermato, and then, you know, where, and there's another opportunity to wait there, possibly a retard there. Do you see yeah. what I mean? So there are plenty of options. So you have to decide because basically, I mean, that's all it is, and he just fills in the blanks. This has to be beautiful. But I think when you're done... So there's, there's not too much fussing in, in after, after the troll, for me. But, but everything you have to, everything you do has to be sort of beautiful and natural, and that just takes, takes a while to work out. So I'll, I'll leave you with that. Let's go on from here. This is a beautiful spot. Yeah, wait a minute. Okay, now, you have to promise me something. Mm -hmm. That you're never going to start playing just like that. Remember, every note you play has to have thought. Mm -hmm. So that when you start, my, my teacher was very hard on me about that too. I, everything you have to think of the, he used to always say, tempo, tempo time duration. You have to think of the kind of sound you want, how you're going to produce it, the kind of character and the tempo. You couldn't have thought of that, all of that, before you started. Remember, you have to have this, this is a terribly important thing. You have to immerse yourself, sort of bathe yourself in every sound you make. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's, it's, it's not going to be, you know, if you, don't, if you don't experience it here, the listener certainly will not either. See, remember, you're the messenger of all of this incredible music. That's your mm -hmm. prime duty in life, our duty, okay? Try that, so, so think before you play. Pedal down, focus. Good, do that again, please. Mm -hmm. Do that again. Remember that the pedal is vital in this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm hearing this here. Do you really want to do that? Mm, probably not. Definitely not. Definitely not. Remember this, this is clean. This music is clean. Mm -hmm. So that means... Uh, especially since there's a slur between the two notes. He very nicely puts that there as a guide. Mm -hmm. So it's a louder, softer, clean pedal. Diminuendo. End of first little phraselet. Mm -hmm. See? So, yeah, so, and all of that they want to hear. Try that. There's a sforzando on that F, right? Yeah. And what's before it in terms of the dynamic? The crescendo, right? Excellent. Yes. Excellent. Now that is not coming through. So, so the, mm -hmm. the what's happening is that that sforzando happens to too suddenly, and it's it's not it doesn't have a pleasant sound. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and and remember, there's not a there, there may be in this piece a lot of um, gut wrenching stuff, I think, in it, but it's never harsh, never. So um, so. And that, and you know that when you when you get used to a piano, you work with that, of course. So that we, and it's a kind of thing. And if this is not a pretty note on the piano, what you can do is you can balance it out with the left note. You work at it that way. But 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 this is okay. I think you would just stay too sudden. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go from the door. 
that's fine. Good. that for a minute. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> if you had to describe that to, to the listeners, what would you say? What, what, would, what kind of imagery would you use? Like a waterfall. Water. Okay, that's good. Watery. Yeah. I think that could work. What, um, about something that, what about something that's maybe not so wet? Like wind, maybe, or a breeze, um, or a branch with things on it. Because he has he has an instruction there. Like, what what is it? The, yeah, lightly leisuremente, something like that. Leisuro. Leisure, leisuremente. Okay, leisuremente. and that's very good. So yeah. uh, that part of it is not there when you play it. Yeah. And maybe if you think of it as being less less watery, that would work. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Why don't you play it without pedal first, please? Yeah, the problem is it's just keeping it. Okay, no, no, no. That that is very. But we can fix it. We can fix it. Yeah. Remember, remember, my teacher told me, and I value this very much. He said, in order to be a good pianist, you need two things. You have to be a good detective and a good surgeon. So you have to be the person. The detective part of it needs to find the problem, mm -hmm. and the surgeon part of it needs to dissect it and fix it. So saying that is hard is one thing, but then then it, then you know you're a smart man. You need to you need to know how to fix that. So the problem there, of course, is that the thumb's on the black key, isn't that right? Yes. And so the crossover part is difficult. Yes. So let's do that slowly. I'll show you how to cross over better. Slowly. Uh, and don't play with. Don't play before you think, please. Slowly. Good. Okay. Okay. I, I'll tell you exactly what the issue is. You need to read the music a little bit more carefully. He has little dots on all those A flats, right? There is a dot. Yeah. And so that means. That means that you don't have to connect these. It means that you play it short. Yeah. And it also, it also means that it probably is going to have a little accent. You're holding it and trying to cross over. That's why it's so difficult. In, in a, so this is what's happening. And you're stuck. Yeah. So, so in that case, there isn't actually going to be a crossover. You're going to move the hand laterally this way. So you've got this. Look, I'll do slowly. And you just pull your arm gently this way, keeping the hand in the same place, yeah, and keeping your thumb slightly curved to it be not. Nice. Take your foot off the pedal, please. Short, short, short. Correct. That's right. And that you practice slowly mm -hmm. um, until you under with the distances. And then when you go up, this is very gentle. Remember, this is there's nothing not gentle about this movement. Mm -hmm. So with this. Uh, it's going to be very gentle, and if you use the pedal, it's just going to be very lightly, and then eventually, as there's a crescendo, the pedal will help you, so that you build out forte, more or less, but but not any kind of intense kind of thing. It's, it's, it, remember, it's more inner. Yeah. Okay. Try this for me from... Good. Good. Would you mind playing that slowly for me once? How many parts are there? I want to say four, right? Or maybe three. Well, actually, well, because it depends on whether you're taking each, as they're like moving in, different voices moving in parallel. No, 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 it's only two. It's only two? Yes, you see, if, he, if it had been more than two, he would have the stems in different directions, see? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is, this is the critical that you, um, and, th and this is why it's fun to study the score. Yeah. Um, because all of this, because you should know that. Um, so it's really only two parts. The difficult thing there is that because it's only two, it makes the melody over a wide tessitura. See? Yeah. So 
it's not but and and then of course on the instruments too that dies so quickly and then this has to balance with it perfectly and finally to maintain a perfect balance there. It's a good, a good place to start is with out pedal, that you can hear it. Yeah. Okay, yes, yeah. very difficult, right? Because there has to be, even without pedal, Perfect legato, and even here. Color. And then, do you want to try this for me? I'm trying to remember how I found out chord chords. Ah, right, right. So that's. Okay, right. Or just start, start from. I would start, I'd like you to start right there. Okay, the, yeah. the human body is not a flawless machine. Yeah, but it's okay. <laughs> What's the dynamic there, young man? The forte, isn't it? It is. I would say you're a little bit louder than. Okay. Re remember, the the left hand is making quite a racket because it's got more notes than the right hand. Yeah. So watch mm -hmm. the balance. Um, just a second. Just a second, please. Yeah. Um, you seem very sure of, of the character when you get there. Before that, not so much. Uh, with all of with all of this stuff, I'm not quite sure what you want to do there. This builds up, right? So yeah. You, and the appoggiatura thing, it creates a sigh of some kind, right? So the, and then maybe more on this one. It finishes there, and then a subito piano. Just, it should be sort of it's up uplifting from an inner an inner place somewhere so there all this stuff when you play it needs to be carefully considered because it's not really piano writing is it I mean that could be a violin or something with, yeah. with broken chords it's so uh, when Beethoven had an idea whatever instrument or whatever he had in his mind at that point he just wrote it out it's not like Chopin you know, who sort of wrote that and it worked gorgeously right yeah that's that's very important to understand so that so that when you play that, you you have to think out of the box a lot. Um, oh lordy, we're running out of time so quickly. Um, in places like this, be very aware of the rests, please. So all of that is important in the development, which is not, with with all due respect, it's not the most interesting page of music that he ever wrote, is it? Mm -hmm. But it's Beethoven, and even if it was by a third level composer, we have to work hard to make it go. It's it's sort of soft most of the time. I, mm -hmm. I think your inflections are a bit too bit too big. I think it's like a squeeze box. It just sort of goes back and forth. Mm -hmm. And finally, he yeah. arrives at it, right? I think this is one of the most beautiful things in all of music this yeah. year. I would love you to try that again, please. Mm -hmm. And think of something significant when uh, when it goes from the, uh, when the D-flat becomes a C-sharp, think of something amazing there. It's sort of like the world changes in an instant. Yeah. And, and then it's a... And suddenly, it is unbelievable that, that a person can think of such a thing. You have to bring that across in a very clear way, mm -hmm. says the teacher. Um, but that's very important. You, you know, you have, to, um, you have to understand it on a sort of a black dots on a page level, and then you have to conceptualize it, and then you have to do it, and then you have to bring it over. This is hard, this is the hard part, okay? Would you like to try that? Can you start there? You can do better than that. 
it's a crescendo in there, right? That's where the sky opens up. Right down. <laughs> Sorry. And a beautiful, an amazingly beautiful diminuendo there with a perfect legato. That's a, that's a fun passage to practice. I think there's so many options. What I want you to do less of in these things, they're a little bit too beaty. Mm -hmm. We're going to hear that anyway. I think the balance is also off. I think it needs to be more right hand. And when you get to blue, it has to have amazingly clear rhythm. It's a little iffy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I also think that this. This change is kind of amazing, even though it's it's a little strange. I yeah, but but I, I think you're doing it nice. I think you could open again. You're in sharps now. And then change the color here. Crescendo. Subidopian. It's just f chock full of instructions that we have to try and understand. And what I love about this music is that. Um, he, in the later sonatas, he will often break away and give instructions not only in Italian but in German, right? Yes. Which for me means that it was even closer to him since he writes it in his mother tongue, the instructions. Yeah. Because some of the German words don't, don't translate so well to Italian. But a thing like zurückhalten, you know, it means, which means holding back in a different way, just written in okay. But, but, it, but it's, that, it's that kind of thing. So just to finish the class, I'd love to hear the end of it. Um, by the way, you know, in the original edition, he sort of has an extra note here. Over there. You know that, right? Instead of that, he has this. It even says so here at the bottom. I love that. I think it fills out the harmonies. Wait, where does it say? You see here? Look here. It says... In original C... Yeah, it's over here. So either... He adds oh, a. Okay. So, so you can think of that, but when that is done, this time here, then left hand, subido again, new phrase. The big thing is sort of like, what? You know, it is, uh, to me, it's an astonishing sort of, you don't know, you know, it, it is sort of done, but yet it's not. Just play the final bit for us, please. Maybe from Sorry. here, as beautifully as you can. This is not an easy thing to do, but but it's it's a lifetime of work. It's going to be so much fun. Yeah. Thank you. That's one of my favorite things ever. Thank you. Thank you very much.